Hey guys, Jameson Redding here with the Road Trip Angler, and today I'm going to be reviewing the CUDA 126 from NRS. The CUDA 126 is an inflatable kayak, and they call it a sit on top kayak. It really is very similar to what I would say is a stand up paddleboard. It's a very flat surface, wide, and has a frame seat. Designed with similar technology to the NRS rafts, it's actually also very durable. And one of the things I get asked a lot when people see me paddling or fishing out of an inflatable craft is, aren't you afraid of hooks penetrating the craft? But to be honest, it's never been a problem for me. And I think you would have to really try to put a hook through this because it is very durable and people have been fishing from rafts for many, many years. And this essentially is no different than that. But I wanna to talk to you a little bit about where this makes sense and what I like and dislike about it. Before I get into that, I wanna go over the specs. The CUDA is available in two different sizes, a 10 foot eight inch size called the 106, and as we tested here, the 126, which is 12 foot six inches long. They're both 38 inches wide, and the 10 foot version weighs in at 27 pounds, where this one weighs in at 31 pounds. So both very lightweight. The boat that we tested also has a capacity of up to 300 pounds, according to NRS's website. Now I think that is very conservative. I weigh 220 pounds and I probably carried around 30 or 40 pounds worth of gear and I still felt rock solid stable. So if I was gonna add some overnight camping equipment or anything like that, I have no concerns that this boat would not support that extra weight. Both the 106 and the 126 come with an included backpack, the pump you need to inflate them, a patch kit, and the fin, as well as this frame seat. This particular kayak has two chambers on the outside that you inflate to around three PSI maximum. The floor itself is actually drop stitched, which allows you to inflate it to a higher capacity around eight PSI, which it actually says that it has a maximum of 20 PSI on the board, but I recommend not going above eight or nine PSI. And it makes it very, very rigid to stand on. I mean, no problem moving around on this boat. It feels just as solid as most solid kayaks or solid plastic kayaks do. The chambers are glued then to it, so you actually have three different chambers that you inflate. So if you do end up with a puncture in one of them, you're not just gonna completely be out on the water with no air left in any of the other chambers. And I do recommend always carrying that patch kit and a small hand pump with you. It can get you back on the water very quickly and back to fishing. I have an electric pump and I strongly recommend picking up an electric pump if this is something you're going to be doing a lot. If you're going to be storing it or transporting it deflated and need to inflate it when you get to the water, the electric pump is going to save you time and energy. One of the biggest things I would recommend before we get into this, and this is kind of, could be one of the downsides to an inflatable craft, is you do not want to leave these boats inflated a day like today where the sun's out and it's actually pretty warm. If I had inflated it this morning when it was cool and the sun wasn't out to that maximum PSI, it is going to actually expand. And that could cause a problem with one of the seams breaking loose, or it could just over expand the tubes and cause it to pop let some air out before you store it or completely deflate it and store it that way. Well, I'm gonna catch a fish right now. The CUDA 10.6 comes in at $13.95 and the one we tested here, the 126 is $14.95. So a hundred dollar difference. Now, when you think inflatable kayak, you may think, well, that's gonna be a lesser expensive kayak and it can be compared to some of the hard shell kayaks that are approaching $16, $17, $1,800 dollars these days when it comes to paddle craft and even more when you're looking at a pedal boat. But I think what you're getting out of the NRS inflatables, especially the CUDA line, and we'll also look at the Pike, which is their sit inside version, is that you're getting a lot of value in this boat. You're getting a lot of durability and you're getting years of knowledge when it comes to designing inflatable craft. They've been making rafts for a very long time and rafts that you fish out of. So they know what they're doing. And there's a few key things on this boat that really stands out to me and makes it worth that amount of money. If you have constraints on where you can store your boat or you have constraints on how to get your boat to and from the water, an inflatable kayak may be the best option for you. It packs down into a backpack. You can throw it in the back seat of a car or in the trunk. You can store it in a closet and you don't really sacrifice a ton of performance. <laughs> 
kind of starting at the bow, you've got a nice handle and you've got a reinforced area. So if you have any kind of anchor line going off the bow, it's gonna protect that spot. And you'll see as we go through the boat, there are a lot of places that have extra material, whether it's the EVA foam in the standing area or those kind of skid areas on the bow and stern where it's gonna have more friction. And that just will keep the boat lasting a lot longer and being more durable. And I really think that it was thought out very well from that standpoint. You'll also see that we have D-rings down both sides plus bungee. One of the big things I like about this is the foot pegs. The previous models that I have played around with in inflatable kayaks, foot pegs always seem to be one of the missing things. And that may seem like not a big deal, but when I paddle, I like to engage my core so that I can spend more time on the water and be a lot more comfortable. If you just use your upper body, you're gonna get tired a lot quicker. So being able to put my feet on the foot pegs and brace when I paddle makes a huge difference. I also feel like the way they executed being able to put the foot pegs on the boat was very clever because it's easy to still deflate the boat and pack it down small because you can remove these simply by sliding them out. They're also adjustable so that if you have different leg lengths but you find that kind of sweet spot for your seat, you can adjust for those as well. You'll also notice as we go around the boat that they have a few accessory mounting options. This is really cool because this is the new Yak Attack switch pad. And what that allows you to do is add the Yak Attack switch, which is essentially a short piece of gear track and gives you the ability to mount different accessories. You can also glue more switch pads onto the boat wherever you might want them, but it comes with five right out of the gate. Now you will have to buy the switch from Yak Attack, which is the plate that screws in. And if I could say one thing that I wish that came with the boat, I wish it actually had five of the switches to go with the switch pad, but it's very easy to pick those up from Yak Attack. It's just one more step that I had to take in order to rig the boat the way I wanted it. Looking at the floor, it also has this EVA pad on top. And I think that does a couple of things that it's gonna add a little bit more confidence in this area for me to drop hooks and things on the boat, protect it from you know getting that wear and, and the potential of puncturing the tube or the, the deck right here in this area because it adds a little bit more thickness to it and a little bit more protection to it. But it also gives it a lot of grip when it's wet because this PVC style material can get slick when it's wet. So that's gonna grip really good in that that standing area. Down the center, which may seem like kind of a small feature, is this 24 inch measuring board. If you were tournament fishing, you can quickly kind of cull your fish without having to pull that other board out. I also like it because I like to know when I get in that trophy range when I'm catching different fish. A really cool feature on the bending branches paddles that I paddle with. It's a small thing, but to me it makes a huge difference for the angler. Moving back into the seating area, I found this seat to be pretty comfortable. I have spent several hours in it and you know it's it's pretty flat on the bottom it doesn't have a whole lot of lumbar support but I did not find that it was uncomfortable at all it's lightweight it packs down really well and it's easy to attach via some straps to some d-rings to the deck of the boat you can also adjust it forward and aft a little bit which I think is important depending on how you rig the boat to be able to get the most out of your speed and tracking the seat is a little bit lower than some of the high low seating options that you might see in a hard shell kayak. So getting up and down can be a little tricky and you may want to consider adding some type of strap that would help you get up and down, which I think you could mount using that Yak Attack switch pad. And that may assist you again, mostly in getting back down so you don't have to fall into the seat because that's going to be the trickiest part from standing and sitting. But actually getting up and standing on this boat, I felt very solid and very stable. Now I'm gonna stand up just so you get some shots of that. I mentioned earlier that it comes with their, what they call their all water fin. So it's still pretty low profile at probably somewhere between four and five inches sticking down from the boat. And this is a great fin if you're gonna be paddling lakes, small ponds, or you know more open water and you want the boat to track really well. What I have found, however, is that I tend to use this boat a lot in moving water. So I picked up what they call their whitewater fin. And you can see the difference here. It's a lot smaller, but it still helps you track a little better than if you don't have it. Without that fin, inflatable craft sit on top of the water and they have a tendency to be easily blown around by the wind or moved around by the current because they're not in the water, they're on top of the water. It does come with the 
all water version. And if you're fishing in lakes, ponds, more open type water, this is the one for you. If you're gonna be using this in the river, I strongly recommend you pick up the Whitewater NRS fin, which is a little bit smaller profile and will allow you to get through a lot shallower water in those river situations. Fish on. If you're someone that likes to get out on the water for a little while at a time and you have storage problems or you don't have access to a truck and a trailer to haul a big kayak, this could be a really great option for you because it is still a very versatile platform. It inflates pretty quickly. You can rig it out with some accessories and you can get out there and catch some fish. It's very easy to maneuver. It's very easy to paddle. It's very easy in general to just get to and from the water. This is a very versatile platform, packs down, it's lightweight. I think it's gonna be very durable. I've never had any issues with it. And you can have a lot of fun out on this boat, which if you're gonna be doing that quite a bit, I strongly recommend picking up a good electric pump that you can set the PSI to and be doing other things like getting your paddle and your PFD ready and your fishing equipment ready while these chambers are inflated. There he is. Oh, really? It's a big one. It's a big one. And that's pretty much my review of the Cuda 126. I really like this boat. I'm gonna be using it a lot more this year. I've used them in the past and I love taking this boat and going river fishing in it. It is the perfect boat, in my opinion, for that type of water. We're also gonna be doing some other videos talking about the Pike, which is their sit inside version. So be sure to check that out. We'll try to put the links in the description and we'll be comparing inflatable kayaks to hard shell kayaks or more traditional kayaks and talk about where one may benefit over the other in different areas. So be sure to check those videos out. And for more information about this, we'll put a link in the description to NRS's website as well. And please subscribe to the channel and come back for more tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. Road Trip Angler would like to thank our global partners for helping support the mission to get people outside and on the water.